After year-long dramatic side-by-side -side battles, the unlimited season concludes in a paradox paradise. Hawaii, islands defining nature's rugged beauty in a palette of colors. At Pearl Harbor, a historic naval base that 55 years ago served as catalyst to engage the U.S. in a world war. And today serves its country as the site of the final event of the 96th unlimited hydro season. mainland Honolulu's Pearl Harbor on the island of Oahu hosts the final event of the unlimited hydro tour the JN Automotive Hydro Fest hello everyone I'm Dick Crippen this is Ford Island in Honolulu Hawaii Pearl Harbor to be exact a historic race site a racing paradise for sure this is as we said the last stop on the tour and it should provide some exciting racing the trade winds are up the sun is out we're ready to go now you know coming into this race Pico American Dream with Dave Vilwak and crew has already captured the O'Doul High Points Championship for 1996. So where's the battle? It's in second place. The Miss Budweiser with Mark Evans and Mark Tate in the Smoke and Joes are battling for second place points. And it'll be a battle that should go on all day long. We are going to also be talking about the season coming up because everybody down here in the pits is talking about it. There are rumors flying everywhere about driver changes, team changes, sponsorships, and in the middle of it all, Jim Hendrick. Dick, they call it the silly season in auto racing with drivers changing seats and rumors of crew chiefs perhaps changing camps and sponsors changing here and there. And we have those rumors persisting in the unlimited camps today. And right in the middle of it all, the team right behind me, the Budweiser team. Mark Evans, the driver, coming off his first victory of the year at San Diego and is doing well in qualifying. Qualifying number two behind Mark Tate. We'll try to sort it out all for you before this program ends. Now let's go down to Steve Montgomery. Jim, the wind here on Pearl Harbor is not a rumor. It's reality. In fact, it's been with us throughout testing and qualifying. And thinking back, it's been with us through a good part of the 1996 season. Three of our events so far have been affected by windy conditions. Looking at the flags around the pit area, it's hard to believe that we're going to run unlimited hydroplanes today. But this race course seems to handle the wind a little better than some. In fact, Mark Tate and the Smoke and Joes ran well over 160 miles per hour in very windy conditions. Heats 1A and 1B have been run in conditions a little windier than we see right now. Let's go to Dick and Jim for a recap of those heats. Well, Stephen, Heat 1A, the wind indeed was a factor. Well before the start of the race, Dave Vilwak and the Pico American Dream found himself in the infield attempting to get on plane. He managed to make the start from lane two and with Mark Evans and Miss Budweiser took the inside lane advantage and stayed in front from the start in a great late season charge for Mark. You know, Dick, the fastest lap in this particular heat was 146 for the Miss Budweiser, as the Budweiser, of course, leads the way and goes on to victory and picks up 400 very valuable points because he came in trailing the Smoke and Joes for second place in the O'Doul's high point standings by about 150 points. Mitch Evans driving the Appian Renegade went out in the first lap. He did not finish the race. Mike Jones could not get the Miss X side up on plane. He did not start the race. Mark Evans took the win in some rough seas, clocking a Zodiac fast lap of 146 miles per hour. And the Fruit of the Loom scoreboard at the end of Heat 1A showed the Budweiser, Pico American Dream, Fluger Honda, Appian Geronimo and Miss Exide in that order. We talked about the bad start that Dave Vilwak had. He had some problems. Steve Montgomery got him at the dock. David, a little like trying to get underway in the open sea, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we just, yeah, the motor went. We're, our motors are in real trouble this weekend. Nothing's running, so uh, it's just the way it goes. It wouldn't take throttle, and so it made it hard to get up on a plane, and then finally got it to catch and made the heat. So <laughs> that's the way it goes. It's a long day, though. You do have time to do it again. Yeah. Yeah, we only got one motor left. That's the problem, though, in a saltwater race. We're, we're going to have to come from behind, but we'll work at it. The action saw Mark Tate and Smoking Joe's on the inside. He takes an early lead in the corner one. But watch Mike Hansen driving the DeWalt tools. He comes out, trots out the horses, and really pushes Tate. And, of course, Tate has to pick up 400 very important points in Heat 1B. 
to keep his 150 point lead over the Budweiser who won the A section of this first heat. Tate and Smokin' Joe's took a Zodiac fast lap 148 miles per hour in lap one. Now Mike Hansen continued the pressure about two miles per hour behind Tate. The fastest lap of the day was the 148 mile an hour first lap for Tate and the Smokin' Joe's. And of course the second place boy on the left of your screen is a heavy boat and they seem to like the rough water. He got good speed out of the DeWalt tools too. Mike Hansen putting the pressure on Mark Tate all the way. Mark Tate does manage to take the checkered flag, though, in Heat 1B, which keeps him right in that battle for the second place in high points with the Budweiser. He picks up 400. A battle for fourth came down to the wire between Steve David driving the Dole Cannery and Ken Muscatel and Allied Computers and Applications. Muscatel at the very end. Just watch it right here. That's Steve David to the right. Ken Muscatel on the left coming closest to you and he just noses him out at the finish. A good race a little further back in the pack. Right in front of all that action, the RS Easton presents Miss Bonds with Scott Pierce finished in third place. After the heat, Steve Montgomery went dockside to talk to Mike Hansen of the DeWalt Tools. Boy, you look strong. You love it when the wind blows? Uh, we've got an excellent race boat in this rough water, and uh, fortunately, the last half the season tends to be pretty rough. So it's the first time we've actually hung with the Smoke and Joe running on the outside. We've run with them when we were on the inside, but we did on the outside, so it's a good sign for us. You qualified fourth, didn't look bad, but this boat looked real strong in this condition. Yeah, it, it runs real well. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised right now that we're running laps close to what we qualified at. That's just the way the boat is. It likes rough water, and it doesn't seem to affect it as much as it does some of the other teams. What does it take to get licensed as an unlimited hydroplane driver? Doug Grau is the newest of those drivers, and he took Ken Muscatel's Ally Tellison computer and applications boat to get the final checkout here on Pearl Harbor. He talked to us about the requirements. You don't just jump into these and do these. You spend a lot of time in the limited classes. I've come up through most of the classes through the limited. And at the referee's discretion, it's uh, 10 to 15 laps at an average speed of 130 miles an hour. And uh, I did mine in uh, 10 laps. But no, you just don't jump into them. We said referee, but there's also at least one other driver involved. Yeah, Mark Evans, he was with Mike when I was going through this. And uh, yeah, the other drivers like to watch. They like to see what's going on when the new driver's coming in. Mike, or Mark and I are very close friends, uh, grew up together in the sport, so it's, he's a lot of help to me too. Congratulations to Doug, the son of the late Bill Brow. Keep your eye out for him in 1997.